If you wonder why your video doesn't get enough views and likes, why YouTube search doesn't show to a bigger audience, then probably your video lacks optimization. No worries, we can fix it together. Hey everyone, it's Mary from SEO Power Suite here and in this video I'm going to share with you the entire process of optimizing videos for YouTube from A to Z as well as little known hacks and strategies to make your video visible and rank high in search results. Let's go! And the best way to make your video rank high on YouTube is to make it match a relevant query. How do we do that? The answer is pretty obvious. Keyword research. You've heard a lot about keywords, but this is actually the ground for any search engine. And YouTube is no exception. Keywords that you use in title, description, text, keywords that you pronounce during the video help YouTube understand what your video is about. And the better it understands the content of your video, the higher you will rank. Here is what YouTube says. Like Google search engine, search on YouTube strives to surface the most relevant results according to keyword queries. There are several ways on how to find video keyword ideas. First, use YouTube search suggestions. Why this query is good? Because these are what people actually type when searching for a video. And if YouTube suggests them to you, then they are certainly very popular. You can also pick the most popular video that appears in the results and check out the keywords this video has in its title, description and text. There are two Google Chrome extensions that I strongly recommend to install and that are going to help you a lot with keyword research. They are TubeBuddy and BitIQ. When you add TubeBuddy in Chrome and connect it with your YouTube channel, just run a search and look at the sidebar. Here you will see a keyword score showing search volume, search per month, how competitive the keyword is, what tags are used most. TubeBuddy tells you whether it's a good idea to target a specific keyword or it's better to pick something else if the keyword is too hard to rank for. With VidIQ, the installation process looks similar. Add it to Chrome, log in, and see the top keyword opportunities, competitors, related queries, tags used in the video, and more. When you click a video, both TubeBuddy and VidIQ show you video analytics, which is super convenient. You can see the video summary, what SEO practices were used in this video, as well as video tags. All this data might help you in the future when you will optimize your videos. Now, the previous methods are good except for one thing. You do spend a lot of time checking each of your keywords manually. To speed up the process, you can use a keyword tool to check all the keywords at once. If you use the Rank Tracker keyword tool, go to the Keyword Research module, choose Autocomplete Tools, select YouTube Autocomplete, and type your keyword phrase just as you would on YouTube. The software will show you the list of the most popular autocomplete options. The key point is that you can check as many keywords as you need at once, thus saving yourself much time. The software automatically saves the results in the table, so you don't need to write down the results the way you would with the YouTube search suggest. Rank Tracker also collects Google's latest search stats, letting you compare the keywords in terms of monthly search volume, competition and difficulty, and decide on their potential. When you already come up with a list of keyword ideas and want to compare them to pick the most popular one, it is a good idea to use Google Trends. To start the YouTube search feature, open Google Trends, enter Query, click Search, select Web Search, and choose YouTube Search. Here you can compare one keyword or keyword phrase with another one. Also you can see which keyword is used more often in a specific region. See popular related queries, top queries, and rising ones. Awesome! So you're done with keyword research, you know exactly which keywords you want to rank for. Now, what should we do next? Optimizing metadata. The video metadata is all the visual and textual information that describes a video to viewers and search engines. Titles, descriptions, text, thumbnails, captions – all these are called metadata. And we need to optimize every single element of our video to make it visible, rank high in search results and appear for relevant queries. Let's start with the title. 
This small text line is extremely important as it helps viewers decide if this video is something they were looking for and want to watch. A well-optimized title has not only SEO value but can drastically increase your click-through rate. Here is what YouTube says. Well-written titles can be the difference between someone watching and sharing your video or scrolling right past it. So the idea is clear. The titles should be catchy, should accurately represent what's in the content, and match viewers' expectations. It's proven that videos with exact keyword match in the title do rank better. But where to place this keyword or keyword phrase? I would recommend including it at the very beginning of your title. Example. I'm looking for a BLT sandwich recipe, and as you see, most of the videos put BLT or BLT sandwich at the beginning of the title. To increase your clicks and make your titles more readable, don't be afraid to use colons or dashes after you write your target keyword, just like here. Also, if you include some words in the brackets at the end of the title that would catch people's eyes, your clicks can skyrocket as well. By catchy words, I mean 2021, best, fast, new research, case study, original recipe, and stuff like that. Let's move to a thumbnail. A thumbnail image is like a movie poster or a book cover, and it is usually the first thing viewers see when they find a video. A well-designed thumbnail attracts the attention of users and encourages them to click your video. Of course, you can choose among the three options YouTube automatically generates, but according to the statistics, 90% of the best-performing videos on YouTube have custom thumbnails. So, what should you do to make your thumbnail outperform other videos? Here is what YouTube suggests. Think about your thumbnail even before you shoot your video, so you've got several options when you upload. Make sure your thumbnail looks good both on mobile and desktop. Make as high resolution of your thumbnail as possible and follow the most important technical characteristics. Now, these were the most common practices. What else do you need to know? Look at these thumbnails. They are good because the pictures include a person which makes it more alive and vibrant compared to thumbnails that place food only. The text takes up about 30% of the picture which makes the image more informative but doesn't overwhelm it. And it looks professionally made. And speaking about professionally made thumbnails, Let's have a look at these images. I think you see the difference. In the first three examples, bloggers used auto-generated thumbnails. These pictures have low quality and there is no text at all. The videos may be super cool, but you don't want to click them. Now let's see the second group. I really like all three thumbnails and I'm not the only one. Just see the number of views. They are compelling, eye-catching, contain some text, and people want to click them. So I strongly recommend to spend some time and create such a thumbnail that people want to click. Another hack that may be helpful sounds like this. Avoid YouTube colors in your thumbnail. What do I mean here? The YouTube brand colors are red, black, and white. But it's better not to use them as a background of your thumbnail, especially white, because such thumbnails mingle with the YouTube background. Instead, use colors that will contrast with the YouTube color palette. They are gray, green, blue, purple, pink, orange, yellow. Ideally, all your thumbnails should look consistent. To make your videos stand out favorably from others, you can think about background colors or background styles that can be associated with you or your brand. And use them in all your video thumbnails. Let's move on. Video descriptions. People and YouTube algorithms read descriptions to understand what your video is all about. But what I see very often is that creators tend to write one or two sentences in their description section, place a couple of links, or even skip this part at all. If you want to be the first in search results, you need to get the most out of the description field. And here is how to do it. Make sure to put the most important keywords closer to the beginning of your description. Remember that two or three first lines of your video description will show up in the video search results, so do start on a high note. Finally, don't forget to add some related keywords around your description a few times. As I already told you, YouTube reads descriptions to understand the content of your video. No description, no high rankings. That's it! So the more details you write in the description, the better. 
That doesn't mean that you should write a novel under the video, but if you use like 100 or 200 words and outline the most important parts of your video, that will be great and more than enough. Under the show more button of the description, you can hide all the marketing information like links to your website, social media, timestamps, and playlist of related videos you've created. Now, what we're gonna do next? Optimize text. Somebody says that tags are not really important these days, but I wouldn't recommend neglecting them. Tags make a difference. They can help you rank higher in search and suggestions, and it is another great way to tell the algorithm what your video is about, and we want to use every single opportunity. Okay, how many tags do you need to include in one video? Where to find the most useful tags for your topic or niche? First. Use tools like TubeBuddy or VideoQ to see which tags your competitors use for their videos. This little hack will save you so much time. Just click a video of the same topic you want to rank for and see which tags they use. Here you can see not only video tags, but also the channel tags, which might be helpful as well. Although YouTube is not restricting the number of tags, try not to overuse them. Up to 10-12 is enough. Use this formula to pick up the best tags for your video. Write your target keywords. Two or three keywords will be fine. Then add several alternative keywords of your main keyword. You can easily find them in YouTube suggestions or generate with TubeBuddy. Finally, include several broad terms. These tags usually represent the overall topic or industry. Another way to make our video look more SEO-friendly is to add closed captions or subtitles. YouTube and Google are more successful in recognizing text over audio. But captions are good not only for robots, they might be helpful for viewers too. So if your video has poor audio quality, pronunciation issues, if somebody fails to understand your accent, captions help to deal with all of this. There are actually two ways you can add subtitles to your video. When you upload a video, click Add and then select how you want to add captions. You can upload a file with subtitles, use AutoSync, or type them manually. You can try tools like Triple Media or Amara to generate subtitles automatically. And of course, to expand your audience, you want to translate your closed captions. Just click the subtitles tab of your video, add the language, and voila! Now people all around the globe can watch your videos. The next strategy is one of my favorites. I strongly recommend adding chapters and timestamps, especially for long videos with multiple topics. Video chapters and timestamps increase engagement, help users navigate through video sections, but the best thing is they help Google index the parts of your video and show them in search results for certain queries. So, how to add them in your YouTube video? Open your video description. The first timestamp starts at zero. Hit the spacebar and name the first chapter. If it's an introduction, then intro is OK. There should be at least three timestamps listed in ascending order. The length of one chapter is equal to or exceeds 10 seconds. Try to write short but descriptive chapters. This way visitors can get an idea what the chapter is about. Congratulations! You're done with on-page and in-page video optimization. Now, what shall we do next? improve audience retention and watch time. So, what is audience retention? Audience retention measures how much time people watch the video. Hmm, and what about watch time? Watch time is the total amount of time in aggregate that viewers spend watching your videos. Audience retention helps not only understand how much of your videos viewers watch, but also when they drop off. When do they leave and why? Maybe the topic changed or maybe they got bored. And what about watch time? The more people watch your videos, the better for you, because it's a signal for YouTube that your content is engaging and it's a reason to reward your video by showing it to more people and rank it higher in search results. Here is what YouTube says. Videos with consistently high audience retention and watch time have the potential to show up more frequently in search and suggested locations on YouTube. Okay now, how can we maximize audience retention? Here are a few best practices. Catch your viewers' attention straight away and get to the meat of the question without empty chatter. Remember, the very first 15 seconds of your video are crucial and people are going to judge a video based on these first seconds. 
change camera angles, music, scenery. Viewers will get bored if you will stand still throughout the video. You can also consider adding special effects, changing locations, or using a green screen for a dynamic background. Add some humor. Remember, you don't have to sound like a robot. Write a script of your video, plan carefully what you're going to include in it. Consider adding notes, cards, and other attention grabbers. When checking your YouTube audience retention report, pay attention to where viewers take off. This may give you a clue which parts of your video needs improvement. Now, watch time. How can we increase it? Here is the point. YouTube is a huge business, and like any business, its main goal is to make money. So the longer a video is, the more ads YouTube can put in there. That's why consider creating longer videos, because this is what YouTube expects from us. There is no ideal length for a video, but multiple findings show that videos of 8 to 15 minutes long rank better than shorter videos. To really maximize watch time, your videos should be very engaging. And this is how we move to our next step – provoking engagement. To boost your rankings, your video needs to have comments, replies to comments, likes, shares after a fresh video has been published. The more activity, the better the chances of being ranked by the YouTube search engine. And I know that asking people to like a video and subscribe to a channel may sound a bit like a cliché, and it is in fact. But it works and has a positive impact on your rankings. So please, like this video and subscribe to our channel, I would very appreciate it. Now, let's talk about optimization tips. Add a video link in the end screen of your video to encourage interaction. By placing a link at the end of your video, you can remind your viewers to subscribe or, for instance, suggest watching another video of yours. Ask a direct question to provoke a conversation. You can ask your audience opinion on a particular subject or a specific question. It's not enough to write, just leave a comment below. Not in 2021. For instance, if you own a culinary channel, you can ask your audience to pick one of the two dishes they want you to make in the next video. Be active in comments and show appreciation to your viewers. People are more willing to interact when they have a feeling that a host or a moderator of the channel doesn't ignore them. So in case you guys have any question about YouTube SEO or want to know more about a particular strategy, please write a comment below or a question and I'll be happy to help you. One more way we can provoke engagement is by adding cards to your video to raise video interactivity, promote your brand as well as other videos of yours. Cards hide under the small eye icon in the upper right corner of a video. There are several types of cards. Video cards to promote a video. Playlist cards to promote a playlist. Channel cards to refer to another channel. Cards to promote your products. Now, when your video is uploaded and you did an amazing job optimizing it, it's time to share it via your channels. YouTube SEO is important, but it's not the only way to get traffic to your video. You've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so why not to use these channels? What I'd recommend is to share the link to your YouTube video on any other social media to get a different segment of your target audience. These people may even visit your YouTube channel and watch some more videos. If you run a blog, consider featuring your videos in blog posts. By doing so, you can significantly increase the chance of appearing in Google organic results. You can also highlight your videos in outreach email campaigns. Step 6. Super important. Brand recognition. Build a channel that users can trust and remain consistent when branding your videos. Here are some tips that will let your channel earn credibility and trust. Create a unique recognizable name for your brand. Add a high-quality channel icon to your videos. Add links and contacts to the header of your homepage. Make a short trailer about your channel. Be authentic and original in your self-representation. I love how Grammarly develops its brand recognition. Just have a look. Easy to remember name, high quality channel icon, links and contacts, short trailer, and nice description. Last but not least, monitor your performance. YouTube Analytics is a must for improving YouTube SEO. It includes such metrics as demographics, traffic sources, engagement stats, and search stats. Based on this data, you can improve your next videos and avoid mistakes from the previous ones. 
Let's have a look at the analytics in more detail. The Rich Report shows the general performance of your videos, traffic sources, impressions, and clicks. Pay attention to click-through rates. If you optimize your videos well, the CTR will get higher. Note, however, that an average CTR for half of all the YouTube videos is between 2 to 10 percent, except for new videos with less than 100 views, which can see a wider range. Do not analyze CTR the next day after you upload the video, as it's a long-term metric. Always analyze CTR together with the average view duration to get a better insight into how people watch your videos. High CTR and low view duration mean that your thumbnail or title might be misleading. Low CTR and high view duration may be a marker that your thumbnails are not catchy at all, or maybe your videos are being recommended to a wider audience than the target one. The engagement report will show you top videos, top playlists, and top elements of the videos on your channel, so you can compare the optimization of the top videos to those that fall behind. The audience report will help you uncover your viewers' interests and watching habits. Here you will get plenty of insights into how to rank YouTube videos for your target audience. If you want to win the battle against the YouTube search, you need to have a clear strategy. And in time, you will get what you want. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. And if you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. See you in next videos. Goodbye.